All right, let's get started with Lesson 1, Rate, Unit 7, Kinetics. Now, we just got study, done studying um, the field of thermodynamics. And in that, um, we learned how to determine if a reaction or a chemical process is going to be spontaneous or not. However, thermodynamics does not tell us how fast a reaction process is going to occur. A spontaneous reaction could be fast or it could be slow. Well, the field of kinetics is going to help us determine the factors that influence how fast a chemical process occurs. And so in lesson one, we're going to focus on rate and what it means um, to calculate the rate of a chemical reaction. So we're going to start looking first at the equations to rate. By, by, chemical, or by chemical reaction, the rate can be determined by looking at the change in concentration of the reactants over or divided by the change in time that the reaction occurred in. Or we can look at it in the viewpoint of the products where the change in concentration of the products uh, divided by the change in time of the reaction. Um, now, brackets. When we, when we discuss something about the brackets here that you see, the brackets, and I'm going to put an R, that R represents the reactant concentration. The bra brackets represent the concentration in units of molarity, which you know molarity are units of moles per liter. We can say, look at the same thing for the products, brackets, the product concentration is in moles per liter. All right. Now, if you're an IB student, your units are going to be a little bit different for molarity because we often use cubic decimeters, so moles per cubic decimeter is what we would write for the molarity concentration. So bottom line is if you ever see brackets written like this, it represents the concentration in molarity. All right, now before we move on, um, I'd like to discuss the units of rate. The units of rate are really important for you to know. So we can look at rate is equal to the concentration of the reactants, which means molarity, divided by the time or the change in time, which would be seconds. So the rate has the units of molarity per second, or we can rewrite that as molarity times second minus one if we take the reciprocal. But we can also write or express the units of rate in a more clear picture of moles times liters because molarity is moles per liter. We're going to take the reciprocal of the liters, so it's minus 1, times seconds minus 1. And these are often the units that we're going to see for rate. Um, especially if you're an IB student, or an AP student. If you're an IB student, let me write the, the units out for you that you would see. And they would look something like, again, moles. But now it's going to be cubic decimeters, except it's going to be minus 3 because we'll take the reciprocal times second minus 1. And so the units that I'm boxing here are very important for you IB students to know. All right? So those are the units for rate and the equations to determine the rate of a reaction. All right, so let's move on to looking at some graphic representations of the rate of a reaction. So what we're going to do is look at the reactant concentration versus time. And so let's see, we're going to do, oops, we'll use some brackets here, concentration of the reactants. Okay, if we were to graph the reactant concentration versus time, we should get a graph that looks something like this. All right, now the slope of this graph should be rate. 
which is going to have a negative slope which is based on the change in concentration of the reactants over the changing time right it should equal the rate units now let's look at this graph and see if we can understand what it truly means at first how fast is the reaction going well it's going pretty fast What does that mean? Well, it simply means that we have a high reactant concentration, and those reactants are uh, reacting very readily with each other to produce product. But as the reaction continues, it begins to slow down. So by the time the end of the reaction, it's going fairly slow, and that's dictated by the change in the slope. Um, or in other words the change in our rate over time so why would account for this why would the reaction slow down over time well it's simply because we're running out of reactants as we have less and less reactant concentration the reaction begins to slow down so there seems to be a correlation between the concentration and the rate the more reacting concentration there is the faster the reaction and the less concentration we have, the slower the reaction occurs. And that's an important thought to think of here. All right, let's do in terms of products now. Oops, we actually need to change this, cross that out. That should be products. Okay, so we're looking at products. Now, for the products, we should get a different curve slightly. We should get something like this, where again the slope represents the rate of the reaction, which is equal to the change in concentration of the products over the change in time. And you'll notice that the slope is positive. We have a positive slope, unlike the reactants, we have a negative slope. So what's occurring? Well, initially it's telling us that the reaction is fast we're creating a lot of product very fast now why is that why are we creating so much product very fast well it goes back to what we said earlier because we have a lot of reactants and the more reactants we have the faster the reaction will go to create products fastly and so that's what we're looking at here but in time But in time, we are seeing that the um, reaction slows down. Oops, write this down. The reaction is slowing down. So it's going to slow down. And why is it slowing down? Well, it's because we're losing reactant concentration. And as we lose reacting concentration, we're going to slow down the rate of the reaction and we're not going to produce as much product, which is indicated by this curve. So these two graphs that we just looked at are very typical of a rate of a reaction um, type of situation. Again, as the concentration goes up so does the rate of the reaction as the concentration goes down the reaction goes slower and so we see a commonality theme here all right so this is it for this particular lecture video um, please review it if you need to uh, to prepare for the quiz um, study the graphs and the equations and the units for rate um, very closely for the quiz and that is it for now